mountains, no matter what you do, there's always risks involved. If it's not safe, like, just don't even ride it. It's not worth it. Just the amount of force and power, unimaginable. Safety is the number one priority. Live to ride another day. Avalanches don't just happen. It's not bad luck. They happen for specific reasons, in specific places, and really at specific times. An avalanche is basically a slab or a more cohesive layer of snow that is overlying a less cohesive layer or a weak layer of snow. When the, the critical balance of the two fail, you have what's called an avalanche or a collapse in the weak layer in the slab or the upper, more cohesive layer will actually uh, break loose and, and uh, fall down the mountain. The most uh, dangerous avalanche for a backcountry user are the slab avalanches. Three basics to have a slab avalanche. We have to look out for a bounded snow. This is well bounded, yes, no crust. The second that we need to have a slab avalanche is the steepness. The rule says the steeper, the more danger. And the third thing is that we have a slippery layer, a sliding layer, where the snow can slip down. This is the shrapnel from the avalanche that took out Jimmy Chin. Look at the size of this thing. The weight I felt on my body was unbearable. Like I thought I was basically gonna explode right Dude. there. Dude, yeah. and the way I was feeling when I was well, at like the bottom of this thing is like an ocean, like bombing down the hill. I'd gone through a small sand of trees and just watched those things snap in front of me. Oh, I didn't see the slab at first. I just thought it was like a little thing. And then... and then at the very end, I could feel myself coming out of it and I could feel it slowing down. And I knew that like, this was the time to like, to push and to fight. If you're caught in an avalanche, try to swim to stay at the surface. Swim as you can against the direction of the avalanche. Uh, if you wear an ABS, trigger your handle and the, or your balloons. And if you have an avalanche, try to get this mouth thick into your mouth and keep it between your teeth, hopefully to stay on the surface. It didn't happen many times. I got twice tricked and like two times. You know, I really had the feeling that I was gonna die, and that's really not a funny thing. I got into a, like the biggest slide you can imagine. I got taken down like over two Ks, trying to know what to do, and you basically fight, 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 fight. Uh, I ended up into a canyon, and I was lying on top, like completely destroyed and unconscious, but uh, yeah, I was alive. It's been a big, big, big miracle, and um, also, uh, like a big lesson for me. If you feel that the avalanche comes to stand still, try to bring your hands in front of your mouth. You have a little cave with air that you can survive. When you're buried, your skills are kind of out of the picture at that point. You got to at least know who you're riding with, knows how to rescue someone. Knowledge and experience is really is what's going to allow you to survive in the backcountry. I always say, grow the mind and feed the gut, and that, that's where the experience comes in. The more you go out, the more you see, the more you'll identify, and, and the more cautious or safe you can be in the backcountry. You just want to be patient and keep in mind that, like, you know, getting caught in a, a serious avalanche, the consequences are very real and can be fatal and you'll never be able to ski again. I think the best advice I can give is to take all the variables that are within your control to avoid an avalanche. Remember, these episodes are not a substitute for formal avalanche education. So take a course, get out and practice your backcountry skills, and know your boundaries. <laughs>